Good morning, everybody. I'm glad y'all are here. I believe we've got some more coming in. And so y'all just come in and find a place. As you see, it's a, set up a little different today. Uh, we're having our first Grow Sunday. Amen. How many of y'all ready to grow with the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. So uh, we're just going to enter in and just see what all God has for us. I believe we've got an exciting day of teaching and, and fellowship. So stand with me, if you will, and let's ask God to, to bless this and anoint uh, this with his presence today. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow, pray over this this morning. Let's ask God to just to have his way and will today. Lord, we just love you. We thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this time to just be in your house, Lord. I ask that you just be with this service today, God. Just allow your presence to move in this place, Lord. Let your will be done, your words be spoken. God, I ask that you anoint the praise and worship. Yes, God, God, just allow our hearts to be open to you today. God, and just receive you today, Lord. Just yes, allow God. ourselves to enter into your presence. Lord, we thank you for everything you're doing, everything you're going to do. And we just thank you for this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, we're going to feed on the word today, and then we're going to go feed in, in uh, natural food. There's a lot of good, good food back there. And, and uh, we want to invite everybody to stay for the meal. We've got looks like we got plenty back there. So even if you didn't get to bring something, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, it'll be a great time of fellowship. So it's just going to be a, a great day. Why don't you find somebody, shake their hand, somebody you didn't ride to church with, shake their hand and tell them God's cooking up something good for you today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship him this morning. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord.
thank you this morning. We praise you, God, for the opportunity of entering into your presence, God, with praise and worship. We thank you, Father God, we know that you're in this house today. Lord, where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. Lord, thank you for hungry people. Thank you for those that hunger for the truth of your word. And Lord, we just lean upon you. Lord, Holy Spirit, we ask you to just move in our midst today. Draw us by your spirit. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you just bring us into all that you have today. Help us to grow in you today. Lord, we, we look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus. We just pray, Lord, that you would just uh, do what needs to be done in us today. God, as Jesus said in the book of Revelation, he said, he said, hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So, Father, let us hear, Holy Spirit, what you're saying to us right now. And God, we just ask you, Lord, to just bless and anoint this day and everything that is done. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you thanks for what you've done, what you're doing right now, and what you're going to do in the future. We give you honor and glory and praise. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Somebody lift up a voice of praise to him. Help you to help you have the thanks. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Say it with me. Say the Lord. He is good. And his mercy endures forever. He's so good, I think I'm going to smile today. How many of y'all want to smile today? Amen. Use some of those muscles making your face haven't used in a while. Amen. Praise God. But it's a great day. And I'm so glad that you're here to be a part of this. We're just anticipating that the Lord is going to move in our midst and speak things to us that we need to hear today. Amen. So how many of y'all appreciate the presence of God? Amen. Well, you may be seated. Hallelujah. And uh, we're so glad to have each one of you. We're, uh, uh, as you know, if you're, you didn't know what we were doing today and you walked in here, uh, yeah, let's If you didn't know what we're doing, uh, we're doing Grow Sunday today and a unique time of teaching. We're going to have several speakers today about different uh, things. I believe God has just ordered uh, this, and uh, you may hear some things that you already know today, and God may reveal some things to you today. But how many of y'all know it's important that we grow together uh, as the body of Christ? Amen. And so I uh, just want to kind of just uh, get things rolling here. We're going to do our uh, best. We're going to be handing out some uh, booklets. In fact, uh, uh, if I could get a couple of us, Drew, if you'll help me, amen, and uh, Brother Kevin, would you help me as well? And uh, y'all take uh, both of those stacks over there, split them up. Maybe one take one side and one take the other. We'd like for every adult. Uh, what, man? Yeah, uh, we need somebody to take some pens. Nathan, would you help us out? And uh, uh, if you don't have a pen, if you got a pen, we'll save them for others. But if you've got, if you need a pen, we want everybody to be able to write uh, in your booklet today. So if you don't have a pen, raise your hand. The guys are going to get the booklet to everybody. But if you don't have a pen, raise your hand, and Nathan will. I'll get you a pen, amen. How we, but we've got a we've got a great day of, of teaching in the Word today, and I'm excited excited about it today. And a couple of scriptures I just wanted to share with you before we get going here. How many of y'all know that uh, uh, in the last few weeks and the start of this year, I shared with y'all that God uh, really uh, spoke to my heart uh, that uh, I need to be speaking to the hoppers. And y'all know what I mean by that, amen. In other words, Jesus said this. He said, I, I, uh, you're either cold. I'd rather have you cold or hot. I don't want you lukewarm or I'll just spew you out of my mouth. Amen. How many of y'all know that uh, we need to be a hot ball and fervent, as the word of God says, uh, for the things of God? And God really instructed me, you know, so many times, <clears throat> and I've certainly <clears throat> been guilty of it as a pastor. How many of y'all know there, we do need to focus on the lost? We do need to focus on those that don't know Christ. We do need to focus on those that are in need. Amen? But uh, so many times, if we're just repairing what's, what's broke in our lives, then church will be just a, a filling station experience to come and get what we need to make it through the next time. And when I come, then everything's broken again. But God really instructed me to, to preach and, and, and to speak to those that are interested in maturing. And that's what our goal is this year, is to teach you because God's Word is clear and plain that lets us know that, that we are called to, uh, to do more than just to take care of our needs. But we're called to, to go out and, and to win the world, amen, and to be a carrier of His glory, amen. So uh, Isaiah 5 and 13 says this. It says, therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. We don't want anybody to be bound up anymore. We want you to have the knowledge of God and go forth. And, and really, uh, my base scripture for this whole thing that God spoke to me about this year is Ephesians chapter 4. If 
you want to turn over there, I hope you brought your Bible today. But in Ephesians chapter 4, key verses here. Hallelujah. Verses 10 through 16, the key, it says here, uh, talking about Jesus, it says, And he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. That's, of course, talking about Jesus. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. These are the fivefold ministry gifts. But look what it's given for him. For the perfecting of the saints. Now, are we ever going to be perfect here in this earth? No, but there's a part of you that is perfect. Your spirit man, right? Amen? When you got saved, your spirit man became perfect. But your mind and your body still need some adjusting. Would you all say amen to that? Amen. So, look, it's for the perfecting of the saints. For what? The work of the ministry. Amen? Everybody say, I'm called as a part of the body of Christ to be a minister of the gospel. Now, does that mean you're going to make the call to five-fold ministry? No, maybe not in that office, but you're sure called to be in that function. Amen? So God's going to use every one of us to minister, and it's His will that we take times to hear what God speaks and to apply it to our life for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen? So how many of y'all are seeing what God is doing? And, and the result is this, verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. How many of y'all want to be a part of that body of Christ? Amen. Praise God. So I'm excited. I'm excited about today. And today we're going to uh, uh, have a, uh, several within our body to come share on some things that, that I feel led by the Spirit of God to, to uh, focus on today. Uh, first of all, has everybody got a booklet? Everybody got a pen? Amen. And I want you to be able to keep notes. We put a few uh, 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 notepads, uh, not, no. Uh, sheets in the front of your booklet there so if you want to take extra notes or of course you can make notations on your outlines there because that booklet is yours to take home and I hope that you will keep it for years and refer back to it if you if you want that so so remember that and also just a couple of uh, things you know this is a different setting a different different atmosphere this morning so feel free to go back and get coffee uh, and bring it to your table or water we want it to be a teaching atmosphere we want you to be comfortable in learning today and so feel free to do that today. And uh, you coffee drinkers, if you will, if you notice the pot's out, go ahead and make another pot. But some of you guys make it with the understanding that not everybody may like to drink tar like you. Amen. <laughs> so so uh, uh, keep that going. Also, uh, we did put a little jar back there to say if you want to help us on the cost of these booklets, we appreciate any donation you can, you can make uh, uh, toward that. Uh, uh, there's something else I'm supposed to announce. Hallelujah. Help me out, sweetheart, but I forget. Just talking about that. Yes, yes, just want to make sure, uh, and I already said that, but let's make sure everybody stay if you can for the meal. Uh, whether you knew who's having it or not, whether you really, it looks like we got plenty back there. So there's crock pots long up all against that wall. So so it'll be a good time. Y'all stay for the fellowship and we'll we'll feed spiritually and naturally. Amen. Well, y'all ready to get started this morning? Praise God. Well, I'm excited. Now, listen, we're going to try to stick to our time frame. If you'll see the first, first page of your book, we got a, uh, a uh, schedule we're going to try to stick to the best we can. But bottom line, we want to see uh, the, the Spirit of God move today and everybody get what they want. Amen. Are y'all excited about this? Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, so we're going to uh, uh, let uh, this first session get started. So I'm going to ask Marla to come, and she's going to teach us on praise this morning. Y'all give Marla Prickett a big hand as she comes this morning. leader here at this church and I'm so thankful for y'all that enter into worship 
You know, I've told y'all many times, but it's true, that even though we are up there ministering to you, you are ministering to us as you enter into worship. And praise is so important in our life. And we're just going to look at a little bit of it. I know y'all have notes. Um, We're going to look at the Hebrew words of praise. There's seven of them. We're going to go over them. Um, Some scriptures I might just throw out to y'all. Y'all might just have to write them down because we might not have time to flip to every single one. But um, before I do that, there's a couple of scriptures that I just want to have as the base of this. So if y'all want to flip to these two with me, the first one is 1 Peter 2 and 9. All right, in 1 Peter 2 and 9 it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a particular, a peculiar people, I'm sorry, that we should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So it's just telling us we are meant for praise. We were created for praise. Amen. Okay, the next one I want you to go to is Hebrews 13, 15. says by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name so our praise should always look as thanks it should because God has done so much we can be in a horrible situation in our life and there's still something to praise the Lord about there's always something to praise about so I just wanted to kind of lay the foundation of this that we're going to share this morning. So it's on praise, as y'all know, but we're going to learn different words in the Hebrew language that refer to praise. So y'all bear with me because I've asked my dad about five times how to say these words, and I think I still get them wrong. So just bear with me. But if you want to look at your notes, we're going to go over the first one, and I believe it's yada. It means to worship with the extended hand, giving of oneself in worship and adoration. So the one thing I want y'all to see in this that really stood out to me is, first off, it's an extended hand. We know that's visible, right? Like when we do that in service, it's visible. It's taking a stand in your worship. As small as a hand is, it's still something that people have to acknowledge you're worshiping or you're praising in that moment. And so it's something that we have to take a step forward. Some of us, I know when I was younger, It was really hard. Like, I would see people around, and I'm like, man, I'd love to raise my hand, but that's kind of scary. And then people are going to judge me for it. So it's something we have to take take a step of faith in. And we have to believe that the Lord is going to acknowledge our praise and worship to him. But also something else that is said in that is it says, giving of one's self. Something I'm going to bring out a lot in this is one's self. When it becomes praise in your life, It becomes about you and the Lord. So you have to quit worrying about what everybody else thinks around you and start thinking about what God thinks about you. Because praise is something you're giving to him. It's not to acknowledge anybody else. Yes, we have that in this world. Because, I mean, if y'all if y'all ever been to a secular concert or you've seen it live, I mean, people are raising their hands, jumping up and down. They're celebrating this person on stage. But we are celebrating the King of Kings. And so if they can do it for someone that is just as they are, we can do it for the King of Kings. So encourage y'all in that. It's okay to lift your hands in worship because it's something that God sees. He acknowledges you. When you give that. A scripture I'm just going to read to y'all. You do not have to turn there. But it's Psalm 63, 4. This is the words of King David. And he says, Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. So, I mean, if King David could do it, we can do it. And we know that King David struggled with a lot of things. But God still loved him. And he still wanted his praise. So if he wanted it from David, he wants it from you. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next, but I'm actually gonna have y'all skip number two. We're gonna come back to that one at the very, very end. So if y'all wanna go to number three. So this one is Barak. And it says to kneel or bow to give reverence to God as an act of adoration. It implies a continual, uh, concise or conscious giving place to God to be attuned to him in his presence, walking in the spirit. Okay, I believe that when we come down and you see we've had plenty of people do it. When we get moved in the spirit, we come down and there's been people to kneel at the altars. That's a sign of praise. Okay, but you don't just do that for show. You do that because it's something you are wanting to give of yourself to the Lord. Sometimes it is uncomfortable. It is not something that you want to necessarily do in yourself, but you know that the Lord needs that from you. And so it's giving, here we go, giving of oneself, okay? So that's gonna be a key thing with all of these that you are gonna hear me say. But, um, so, you know, it's coming to the altars, kneeling. It doesn't have to be at service, though. It can be in your own home. You know, what else do we do sometimes when we kneel? We pray, right? But isn't pray a part of praise? So we, we have to remember those things. All this stuff that God has given us to connect ourselves with him is all in connection with one another. It's all tools that he's given us to have a relationship with him. Okay, and in your notes, um, it's going to give you the scripture, Psalm 95, 3, uh, I think it's actually just six in there, but I'm going to read three through six. If y'all can turn to it, you're more than welcome. But if you can't make it, it's okay. Just highlight it, write it down, whatever you want to do. But Psalm 95, three through six, it says, <clears throat> For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. And I wanted to back up on that because, yes, it talks about kneeling. But let's look at why we're kneeling. I mean, it's talking about how great our God is. He has created the heavens, the earth. He has formed us. He is worthy to be praised. So I, I do encourage you on these, even these scriptures that are given here. There's no way we can hit all of them. But if you go through them, back up maybe a few verses of, yeah. of what there is on this page. Don't just read that, that verse. There's a lot to do with what's going on in that verse in the Word, and it's going to explain it even better and why maybe they're doing what they're doing in the Word. And so, but that's another way that we can, we can praise is we can kneel, we can bow before the Lord, and we can show Him respect almost in that aspect. Okay, so we're going to move along. We're going to move to number four. Okay, and this one is Hallel. It says to praise, to make a show or rave about, to glory in, to boast upon, to be clam clamorously foolish about your adoration of God. The word praise in the Hebrew word, hallelujah, praise to Yahweh. Okay, so I want to tell you all something first off. As soon as I read this, the first thing I thought of, as y'all remember when the ark is coming in and David is dancing before the Lord? That is praise. And people, I mean, remember, he even had a wife that thought he was foolish for it. And technically, it says to be glamorously foolish. But it's foolish for the wrong reasonings. It's okay to outwardly show our praise to the Lord. And there is sometimes God does something so good for us, we just can't keep it in anymore. We have to express it and let others know what he did for us. And really, let's take, take this in. Isn't our life supposed to be that? Aren't people supposed to look at us and see who Jesus is? And how do they know him? A lot of times they knew him by his works and the word, right? Because they were following, oh, this man that healed the sick. Oh, this man that did this. Oh, this man that did that. And he's always being proclaimed for what he did, and it's a lure. It's, look what I can do for you if you'll just let me be your Lord and Savior. Amen. And so if we praise him, 
and do the things that we are supposed to do, God can be glorified not only to us, but to everyone else around us. So I just wanted to hit on that because that was one of the things that, of course, my mind went to immediately. I just think of David dancing down the streets. But, but um, excuse me just a second. I'm trying to find it in my notes. But there's also another scripture I want to hit on. It's going to be Luke 10, 1 through 9, 16 through 24. I am not going to read it all. It's a lot of word. But there is one part of it I do want to read, and I would love for y'all to go to it with me. So if you'll go to Luke 10, 21. want to know more about this story, I would encourage y'all to go read the full the full um, full Luke 10. I mean, it's really good, but um, I just want to point out an aspect of the story of what had happened. It says, in the hour, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them, them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. So if Jesus is going to proclaim praise to God, do you think we should? I mean, it tells us that Jesus was our example. He was what walked on earth to show us who we are supposed to be, correct? And so if that's the case, if Jesus is going to outwardly praise God, then we should outwardly praise God. It should be an encouragement to us. Okay, so we're, we're going to move right along. Number five, or is it number six? I'm sorry. I'm getting lost on my numbers. Yes, it's number five. And this one is Tehillah. It says to sing Hallel, a hymn of spontaneous praise, glorifying God in song, the total involvement of one's self in worship unto God. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be a constant in praise. It's always going to come down to you and God. You have to put yourself in the position to praise. Okay? Okay, and one thing that um, I really like that it says, I didn't even read it, I'm sorry. It says, it is the praise that we know God inhabits. You know, we sing that song. Oh, you inhabit the praises of your people. That's what we should desire. We want God to inhabit our praise. Sometimes that's loud. Sometimes that's quiet. Sometimes it's inner. Sometimes it's outer. But in anything you do, God should inhabit your praise. And I can tell you this. If you're praising the right thing, he will. So make sure, check yourself. If for some reason you feel like, man, I'm praising and I just don't feel it. Yeah, sometimes we have to quit worrying about feelings and start worrying about faith, right? Yeah. But there's times maybe we need to check ourselves. Am I involved in something that I'm praising instead of God? You know, or am I maybe glorifying something that's not really that? It's the Lord that's bringing it to me. You know, every blessing, everything that's good in your life is because of the Lord. So make sure you're worshiping and praising him for those things. But he inhabits our praises. And so I have down Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. I am going to go ahead and read that to y'all. So if you want to go ahead and turn there, you're more than welcome to. I'll give you just a minute. Okay, so it says, see that ye... See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Whoever, uh, wherever for be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of God of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. 
singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. So in this passage, though, it talks about a spiritual song. You know, sometimes when we're in worship and we kind of go off of what our worship time is, you know, we kind of go off into something else or maybe something y'all haven't heard. That is a spiritual song. There are times that it's not about following the song. It's about following the spirit. And that is true praise. You know, when you are taking the time to say, God, you're in control of this thing and lead it. That's a spiritual song. And so if you're somebody that maybe doesn't like singing, but you like praising, allow yourself to be in that. Allow God to guide and direct your worship because he can. And it's going to be a praise to him. Okay, so moving on to the next. It's number six. It says Shabbat. A lot of us probably have heard this one. It's a loud adoration, a shout proclaiming with a loud voice, unashamed. <laughs> unashamed. What are we talking about? Raising our hands. Unashamed, right? Okay. The glory, triumph, power, mercy, love of God. This word implies that testimony is praise. The, praise, the phrase shout unto the Lord can be understood as the action of Shabbat. Okay. So we can, we can pull tons of scripture from the word about people just, you know, really giving, giving the Lord praise. Um, I'm really not going to go into that one a lot. I believe that we all feel that we know what Shabbat is. Um, so if you want to go into it anymore, y'all feel free. Go through those scriptures. There's a lot of good ones in there, and you can study it a little more. We're going to hit number seven. It's Zamar. It's to sing with instruments. And our voices can be instruments. I don't play an instrument. So if, if God expected that, I, man, I need to get on it because I don't know how to play an instrument. But I can use my voice. And even if you think, I can't sing. Yes, you can. Because God wants you to worship him. He doesn't care how it sounds. So to sing with instruments, there's plenty of scriptures. Plenty of scriptures. One is Psalm 98, 5 through 6. It says, Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. So it's just another way we can worship. But I want to jump back to number two. It's Todah. And it says, to give worship by the extension of the hand in adoration, avowing or agreeing with what has been done or will be. This word is commonly found in connection with sacrifice. We always talk about sacrifice of praise, right? And as a worship leader, it's something that you love and you don't like at the same time. Because sometimes you're like, yo, sacrifice of praise. And then you get up there and you're like, Lord, I gotta have the sacrifice of praise today. Because you're leading. But everybody deals with it. But there's always something to praise the Lord about. And so sometimes we have to understand sacrifice. I'm not going to read the scriptures, but there's, we can pull out two main stories in the word. You know, the, the battle of Jericho, if you want to call it a battle. Okay. Joshua and the Israelites march around and, and God tells them to shout. To shout. Do y'all think it was very fun marching around a city? I mean, that really takes some faith. Okay, are you sure that's what we're supposed to do? It was a sacrifice. Maybe not always a sacrifice of physical, but a sacrifice of mental. You're fighting your thoughts. This dude's crazy. You know, but we all know how that ends. The wall fell down, right? Or you can go to the story of Jehoshaphat. Pastor brings it out all the time. It looked impossible. And not only did they win that battle because of the Lord, but he sent out singers before the army. That just don't make sense. And so if y'all want to hear more about that, I know Pastor talks about it a lot, but y'all go read it. But those are two great examples of sacrifice and praise. I just want to point out a couple of facts and then I'm done. If you were paying attention, I pointed out constantly one's self. It's in there constantly. We have to choose to praise him with lifted hands. We have to choose to kneel before him. We have to choose to boast of his name in praise. We have to choose to glorify him in song. We have to choose to shout his praises. We have to choose to lift our hands 
even with instruments as worship, and we can include our voices in that. And last but not least, we have to choose to, to give a sacrifice of praise. Yeah. Whether the circumstances, the circumstances in our life look great or not, God is always faithful and will come through. Yeah. Praise can be outward, it can be inward, it can be loud, it can be quiet, it can be song, words, dancing, but it's always something for the Lord. In any opportunity that you have to engage, engage in the spirit of praise. I love this visual that Pastor Mark had given. It's like stretching before exercising. It prepares us to receive the word of God for our spirit. It has to be your heart unto the Lord. No one can make you praise. You have to choose to do it. I believe that praise breaks down walls. It brings the impossible into possible and unleashes God's power and glory into our everyday life. Praise is contagious. Yes, it is. It will spread like a fire for those who allow the Spirit to move on them. God wants to enter into our praise and ignite His fire in our hearts. And this is the last thing I'm going to leave you with. It's just a challenge. Let this house, whether it be your body, because God lives inside of us, or this house, let it be a house of praise and not a house to perish. Because without praise, there's nothing. We are called to praise. God will fight and win the battles. Wasn't that good? I don't know about you, but if you would choose to give God praise, why don't you just praise Him right now? Hallelujah! Glory to the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah! Praise Him. Oh, awesome, awesome word. Thank God for that. Well, praise. Isn't it interesting that when you see the word praise in the Bible, there's so many words that it that just in the English language, praise, it means so many different things uh, to us in so many ways to praise God. That was good. Give the Lord a, a thank you one more time. Amen. Excellent job, Paula. Amen. Let's be people of praise. Let's, let, let's be a house of praise. Amen. I can tell you right now, it's going to be really hard to stay on schedule. So y'all don't, y'all don't uh, hold us to that timeline. Amen. Because we want to get what God uh, has for us today. Would y'all say amen? Hey, I just want to uh, uh, stop and just say it's uh, uh, really good to see some folks here. Uh, is that Sister Wanda Bureau? Oh, it's so good to see you, Sister Wanda. God bless you. So it's just a blessing to have you, and, and good to have a, a, a couple of visitors with us, uh, Shirley and Kennedy. God bless y'all. Thank you for being with us today. Y'all give them a hand. Hallelujah. And, uh, good to see all y'all, and Dorothy's in the house. Amen. Uh, she was in another house the other day called Hillcrest, and I had to, I had to go visit her, me and Donna, but thank God she's here today, and praise God for the victory. Amen. Everybody say, God is good. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited to bring this uh, next lady up because she has lived uh, what she's going to teach to y'all. Uh, uh, Sister Faith is a uh, uh, is effective witness. God has put her in a position uh, in the college she works there, and she has been such a refreshing. She gets to engage with people con in conversation uh, so many times, and I can't tell you the time she's called me and Donna just excited about an opportunity uh, that she's taken to witness to somebody and to plant a seed. Sometimes it's just planting a seed, isn't it, Faith? And sometimes it materializes uh, into more things, and it just opens up uh, fellowship. Well, Nathan's sitting here today because he, he met uh, Faith, and he's, he, sometimes we get to have old Nathan in service with us. So, so uh, uh, Faith is well equipped to share this, and it's something we all need to be doing is, is witnessing effectively. So y'all, welcome Sister Faith Glotter. She comes shares with us about witnessing. Right? Yes, amen. And Nathan blessed me when he walked in, and he was lost that day, and 
and um, came and we got him in his, in his classes and everything, but he came back and talked to me and, and brought the light. And I'm gonna share some things, but I wanna go over the, the uh, paper that we have in our books today. Jesus has sent us to witnesses. And Mark 16, 15 says, go into the world, oh, I'm sorry. Um, witnessing effectively, uh, Jesus has sent every one of us to witness. And we all can't witness to the same people, but we all get to come to church here and get lit up for the world um, yeah. for the next week. And then and then when we carry with what Brother Mark gives us, it, it just lights up our world. It just does. Um, we're supposed to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And God must have had a sense of humor because we're all creatures. <laughs> and you have the ability to share if you have it inside. Amen. And um, Jesus told us to go tell others. And then we get to tell our story. Acts 26, 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to great and small. And Paul told his story. And Paul wasn't perfect. You know, he used, in the whole Bible, he used people that, that are just like us. We have good days, bad days, but God still loves us. Amen. And he still carries us. Amen. When we can't carry ourselves, he still picks us up and carries us. And uh, I can tell you what God has done for me, and I will in just a second. But God will use you right now where you are. And uh, I was at, at uh, had to go to the store for uh, my mother-in-law, and uh, was in walmart and the guy said you're my last one today he said i feel really bad and so he i got the groceries and and i paid for them and then i said can i pray for you yeah. and uh, he turned his light off because he was getting ready to go and uh, i don't know what i prayed but god did and he knew that whatever i prayed was going to be the right words because yeah. when i got to the end of the store because i had parked on the other side and i took my groceries that way i turned back and his light was on that means that he was touched somehow Lord. to keep working. And that was one of the things I heard fear in him, that he was going to leave and, and not have his money. But you know what? His light came up on, and I thought, yeah, I believe that he got what he needed just because we stopped and prayed because God listened and he did the work. Yes. And he will always do that. Okay, so then we're supposed to share the love and trust him with the results. And when trust is between two crosses, and Jesus is the representative to us. We heard that one time. Okay? All right. So I uh, have me some notes. I hope I brought them. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, today, we have miracles in this church that people I knew pray for. And it's so cool to see that happen because I love our church. And um, the first one is I'm going to talk about when Jimmy got saved. Jimmy blessed me when he got saved. He did not go to the church house. He got saved in our pickup truck. And we were going to West to um, pay a bill that we were, and it was after work hours. And so um, he turned a different way and he was going across the road tracks and I kind of looked at him and he goes, um, I want to get saved, but only if brother, our pastor was there at the church. Well, it was in the middle of the week and it was after work hours and it was late. I didn't expect him to be there, but I didn't know. And I was like, God, please let him be there. And he was coming to his car to go home. And the preacher was there. That's yeah. not an accident, y'all. Wow. And so he came over and he talked, Jimmy, is that right? He came over and he, he said, hey, what are y'all doing in town? We're paying a bill. <laughs> but we got more than paying a bill. Yeah. Jimmy asked him to lead him in prayer to get saved. And I didn't even know that when we left home, but Jimmy already had it in his heart to do that. And you see what happens. We don't know where people are in life that are ready to give their heart to the Lord, but maybe one word we say That's helps. Right. But Jimmy blessed me because Brother Giller was just as so excited that he just, don't even come in the church. Just pray. Do it right here in the truck. Is that right? And it just blesses me that he's in church with me today in 2024. Okay. There was a lady I worked in nursing um, taking applications, and her name was Joy Dyer. And I love Joy. I worked with her in the, in the uh, hospital in West, 
And then I, she came and she taught nursing school. And uh, she prayed for her family so much. And she would ask prayer for her family. And we would pray. Today we are in there with those three girls of joy. Joy's in heaven, but guess what? Those girls are still in church with us. That blesses me every time because I know the past that we did. Number two, I knew Shawnee. And I knew Shawnee wonderful because she was she was taking uh, prerequisites for nursing school. She was accepted in nursing school, and then she um, went to nursing school. And I was the only one with all the nurses, just like y'all are. And I got to be with all the nurses studying and you know just loving on them and saying when they wanted to quit, you can't quit. You have to keep going because you have life to give to people. You know. And Shawnee was a blessing to me from the day I met her and a wonderful, wonderful friend, but a wonderful Christian and quiet in her manner. She wasn't loud. She was precious. And we pray for Pastor, Brother Mike out there. I call him Pastor too, because he's preaching the word too, because he can pray over your, us. He can pray with, the, with anointing. Brother Mike, you weren't even thought about in church yet. And now I get to spend church time with you. That blesses me. And Bruce too. Do you know that was seeds of prayer that God already put into when it was going to happen. He already knew it was. It wasn't a surprise that Mike was in here. Those girls are in here. But guess what? He knew the right time and he brought them in. And they're still here in 2024. Okay. Um, thank you, Mike. For everything you do for us. Thank you. Hey, um, in 2016, I uh, went to the doctor and he said, nursing school's taking a toll on you. You need to uh, think about a new job. Well, how do you just stop a job and do, you know, what do you do? I did it for 10 years, you know. I've been at MCC 32 years. You see, but I said, okay, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know where a new job's gonna come from. What do I do now? And before that day was over, I got a call from my friend said, do you want my job? And I said, of course not, I can't fill your shoes. I don't know, I don't. And then guess what? A little nudge right here said, uh, you might need to apply because you won't know if you don't. If you don't apply, you're not gonna get it anyway. And I applied, I got everything together and it just came together really easy. And you know, that was the Lord. Cause I hadn't, I hadn't done a, uh, I hadn't done any resumes or anything updated, but it's funny because it all just came together like it was supposed to. And then I had to uh, do a job interview for five people at the same time. And I was nervous and my pen just flew in me in pieces and the spring sprung out and I was like, well, that's a good start. But you see, it doesn't matter how nervous you are, God's still there with you. And he can still bring the peace and he can still make whatever's supposed to happen for you. Yeah. So in 2016, I started a new job in December. And it's a, I'm a, I don't even know what I am, but I know what I'm saying. Um, I'm an accounting assistant, registration assistant for all the book of continuing ed. And uh, I'm the first one that people see, okay? And uh, anyway, in 2023 fall, Nathan came in my office. Nathan is a blessing, y'all already know that. And uh, it's millions of other students over all these years that have called me mom. Well, he called me his Nana. He said, you remind me of my Nana. I said, well, I would like her. <laughs> And that's how we started, right? <laughs> and before I go back up to um, Nathan, um, there's a gentleman that I work with, and his name is Dr. Patterson. And he is um, he's a clinical instructor. But you know what? He would always go to, to lunch in his, tr in his car, and I thought, well, I never talked to him before. I didn't know him or anything. And one day, um, I felt led just to go in there and, and uh, I was looking for a girl in radiology and I came right past his office and he was in there and I said, hey, I said, how are you today? And he goes, fine, but I did not know the man of God that he is until I talked to him and he goes, hey, can I pray for you today? And I, he didn't even know I needed prayer, but it's kind of like the Walmart guy. 
I need a prayer. And yet he stopped what he did and he, he obeyed what the Lord told him. Amen. And guess what? I got to introduce Nathan and Bobby. I call him Bobby. But Nathan and Bobby together, and they have gone to concerts, and God's just opened the doors for both of them together. To, and they go to the same church, too. And he, Nathan goes to church already before, and then he comes here. You see, this is a second second church for him. But you see what I'm saying? What a blessing everybody is. You just don't know. So anyway, um, but putting them two together, there's no stopping them because you don't never know. They go hiking, they do all kinds of fun things together and go places. But you see, what if I would have never talked to, to Bobby and said, hey, one day we were going by there and I go, hey, you need to come in here and meet Bobby. And if, I, if I'm with somebody and they really have issues and I need to pray, I call him and I, I say, are you busy? And he said, I can be there. He comes and he, we all hold hands and we pray for whoever it is. He prays first, I pray second, and they pray third. And you see, it's such a wonderful, the devil didn't want us talking, but guess what? He's, he's ministered to a lot of people. And I'm just saying. And Nathan has been uh, the, the Baptist student ministry. He's been um, put in for leadership at Baylor and MCC. So I'm really proud of him. Because he's accepted to say yes. How many people are people in touch with students? You know, his second semester with us. So you see, we don't ever know what we're going to do, how we're going to do, but... I tell them, just because my name is fake, I don't have any perks. I don't get free heaven. I have to know it for myself. <laughs> and so faith stands for forwarding all issues to heaven, and we can all do that. Yes. We can all have faith to believe for other people. And then forsaking all I trust him, that's also faith. Okay. So anyway, I just want to share with you um, Pastor Mark gave this, and I know how cold it's been, but Pastor Mark gave Proverbs 25, 13. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him for he refreshes the souls of his masters. And that's Proverbs 25, 13. So I just want to say I'm so blessed for this church. I'm so blessed for the teaching. And one time I had a family member that was hard to love. It's hard to love sometimes. And Sister Donna, her words ring true to me every day. I think about this. Because I'd say, well, I have to love her like she lets me. And she looked at me real sweetly and she said, no, you have to love her like God wants you to. There's a big difference how I want to. But you know what, I started doing that and she apologized to me and things started just moving around is it perfect? No, not perfect. But guess what? It might be one day when we're in all heaven together. Because you have to love people like Jesus wants you to. And it's because of the cross that we have all around here that he died for our sins that we can give the message of this. So, that's all I She got up here to teach on witnessing, and then she just abandoned that and just started witnessing. <laughs> and then one of her points was, one of her points was, hey, tell your story. Isn't that what she just did for us? So she just displayed for us exactly what she was teaching. She witnessed to all of us about what God had done for her. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Praise God. And, and you're so right, Sister Faith. We can all do it. God puts us in specific uh, places for a specific purpose. You say, yes. well, I don't have the power to do that. There's a solution for that. God said in Acts 1 and 8, that's in your notes too. It says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness to me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, the utmost part of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. He'll help you to be a witness. And I want to tell you that that uh, 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 God has a purpose and plan, and he has set you. You may not like where you are. I remember having a job one time. I was trying to get out of it for 10 years. Amen. And I kept getting stuck there. But every time I felt like, man, why am I still here? God would send somebody across my path for you. know, I had the opportunity to witness to him. I said, okay, God, I hear you. You know, so you're where you are for a certain purpose. Amen. So go witness and witness effectively because God, has God not done something for all of us? Yeah. 
Amen. So praise God. Excellent teaching, Faith. Give, give the Lord a hand. Give Faith a hand. Great job. Thank you. Now listen. Please don't look at the time schedule like I said. We're going to. We're going to, we don't want to just cut off this. We want to get what God has for us. So we're going to take just a lot. Uh, we had a 10-minute break scheduled. Let's take a five-minute break, uh, stretch a little bit, get you some coffee if you want to, and, and uh, come back, and we'll hit the next session. And I'm looking forward to it. Pastor Donna's going to come teach us on the authority of the believer. Amen. So uh, uh, take a little minute to stretch and uh, to talk to one another, and we'll get started here in about five minutes. God bless you.
gather back up and uh, find your place back to your seat. <clears throat> we're going to keep rolling here. Before we get to the before we get to the next section, we're going to go ahead and give you an opportunity to uh, give and tithes and offerings today. So uh, we can get a uh, couple ushers to join me up here and we'll uh, give you a chance to give today. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are appreciative of what God has given you? Yeah. Amen. Let me ask that again. Anybody thankful for what God has given you? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's given you more than you ever give back to him. Amen. But praise God for the opportunity of expressing our love in, in uh, uh, tithes and offerings. And so thank y'all for being faithful in that. We'll take whatever represents your giving today. We're going to pray and speak a blessing over it and give you the opportunity to come and bring, bring your offering to the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Just say this with me. Say, Father, I thank you for all your provision that you have given to my life. You are the source of all my financial blessings. And so, Lord, I take this, a portion of what you've blessed me with. Thank you, Lord, that you let me keep the majority of it. But I give this portion into your kingdom. I plant it by faith as an expression of my love, and I give you glory and praise and honor. Now, Lord, as I plant it, I ask you to bless it, multiply it. Let it come forth according to your word and bring a mighty harvest for this house the kingdom, and my house. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. I give cheerfully today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give as the Lord will lead you to this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's just sing something Acapulco style. Well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I leave. My burdens down. Well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Well, glory, glory. Since I laid all my burdens down. Amen. So I say glory. Amen. Now I know we had a few come in a little later. Does everybody still have your book and uh, a pen? Anybody liking a, a booklet or a pen? I want you to have this uh, to take home with you in your notes. Amen. You have it referred to from now on. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, this has been good, hasn't it? Amen. Yeah. We all enjoyed the uh, uh, Morris teaching on praise. Amen. And, and, uh, Faith's teaching on effective witnessing, and so praise God for this. Well, I'm excited to hear from my wife, and I know this is an area that she operates in continually for you. I, I hear her when she prays. I, I see her when she prays. She shares her heart with me in, in ways that you don't get to hear. And so uh, uh, to be able to pray effectively, you've got to know who you are in Christ. Amen? And so the authority of the believer, and for us to talk about uh, us doing the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and the only way we can effectively do that is to know, know who we are in Christ and know the authority of the believer. So I want y'all to give a big welcome to my wife, Pastor Donna. She comes and teaches us uh, the authority of the believer. Amen. Praise God.
about the authority of the believer, I'm going to read uh, two base scriptures in Luke 10 and 19. It's going to be the first one. Ephesians 3 and 20 will be the second. Luke 10 and 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Ephesians 2, no, I'm sorry, Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now without him that, that is able to do, now unto him, sorry, now unto him that is, is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. You know, without God's word, we can do nothing, but with God's word, all things are possible. Amen. Us and ourselves, we are nothing. But with God, we are, we are everything we need to be, and we can do everything we need to for him. In the beginning, God created man to be a co-laborer with himself, and for man to reign and have dominion over the works of his hands. God created us to be to walk with Him and and to do everything that we needed to do, and uh, I just thank God for that. Genesis one and twenty six says, and God said, "Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion." Psalms eight and five says, "Has crowned him with glory and honor." Verse six says, "Thou, thou madest him to have dominion over the works of his hands." Thou hast put all things under his feet. God put us here on this earth to be in the beginning. And, you know, I, I was talking with, a, I, I forget who it was the other day, but I was talking with somebody talking about how Adam and Eve messed it up. But I said, if it had been you, you think you'd done any better? <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're human. And, and, uh, and you know, he, he, Adam messed it up. But thank you, Father God, that he had his son, Jesus, that he sent <laughs> the second Adam, and and he took care of everything for us. Yeah. Adam committed high treason and became a servant to God's enemy, the devil. Romans three and twenty three. He lost his crown of glory, for all have sinned and come and fall short of the glory of God. John First John five and nineteen says, "In the whole world around us is under the power of the evil one." You know, if you're not serving God, you're serving someone. And, it, and it's, if it's not God, it is Satan. You know, I, I mean, God gives us our own free will, but we have choices. And our two choices are to live the life God told us to or to listen to Satan and, and to serve self is really what it does. When we, when, we, when we live for Satan, we serve self. And, but when we serve God, man, we have authority. The first Adam lost... Uh, lost authority, the last Adam regained it. Hebrews 2 and 14 says, through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. 1 John 6, 3 and 8 says, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Colossians 2 and 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Philippians 2, 9 and 10 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the, at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Ephesians 1 and 19 says, According to the working of his mighty power, verses 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only in this world, but also in the, that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. And you know, when uh, we're sitting there talking about, about the authority of the believers and what what God gave to Jesus, what, what Jesus had is what we have. When we accept Jesus into our heart, then whatever he had, we have, as long as we're living the life we're supposed to be living. Amen. I want to read, uh, let me see if I can get this to come up. 
I'm going to read Matthew, uh, Jesus, about Jesus' authority, Matthew 7, 28 and 29. It says, And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And Mark 1, 21 through 28 says, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou son of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What, what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad through all the region round about Galilee. You know, Jesus had authority. He had authority, and we have it. We have the same authority that he had to do all that, that uh, he did. And we just need to realize that. After Jesus regained the authority, he delegated it to us, his body. Matthew 28, 18 and 19 says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. So he's telling us. I, I, I'm telling you to go therefore and do everything that that I've done. You can do and, and you can, you know, even the word of God says that us as a body, us as a whole, we'll do more. We should be doing more than Jesus ever did. You know? John 14 and 13 says, And whatsoever you shall ask, in my name. So if you ask in his name, it will be done. Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Colossians 1 and 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 1 John 2, 14 says, We are strong, and the, and the word of the God has abided in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. 1 John 4 and 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. Romans 8 and 37, And all these things are we more than conquerors through him that loved us. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And 1 John 5 and 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, every, even our faith. You know, that sounds like authority to me, doesn't it to you? What are the God, what are God's, we are God's policemen in this earth. He has chosen to work through us, so let's take care of our authority and possess the land. Amen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read a, uh, I'm gonna read a little story out of this this book that I read every day. And uh, first, first I'm gonna read the, I wanna read the scripture. And the title of this is God will back you up. Matthew 16 and 19 says, and I will give unto thee, unto thee the keys. Of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I'm gonna read a little story to kind of kind of make us realize what what this is saying. We talk about making us policemen here on this earth. It says sometimes we ask why did God allow this illness to come up into our life, but the truth is we allowed it. It takes. It, it's like driving down a highway at breakneck speed and then telling the policeman who pulls you over, sorry, officer, 
I didn't realize the speed limit wasn't 110 miles an hour. The policeman would not say, bless your heart, forgive me, I shouldn't have pulled you over. I didn't know you were ignorant of the law. Now he'd give you a ticket. No, he'd give you a ticket. Anyway, ignorance of the law is no excuse. The same is true in the spiritual realm. You must say, I didn't know I allowed the devil to keep me from receiving healing. Yes, but you have the Bible which tells you all the answers. Ignorance of the word is no excuse. Yeah. Sometimes we don't receive healing because we allow a door to, door to stay open to the devil. Often the open door is the result of wrong thinking, Amen. which is usually the result of wrong teaching. Wrong thinking produces wrong believing, and wrong believing produces wrong results. Yeah. Wrong believing, uh, okay, but I'm sorry. Bottom line, if you forbid the devil's strategies against you, God stands behind you. If you do not, God stands behind you. Whatever you do, God backs you up, so choose wisely. So, you know, I, I believe in this, this, this story here. It's telling us, you know, that the authority that we give is what happens in our life. Yeah. Be, uh, it says, what, what are God's policemen in this earth? He has, we are God's policemen in this earth. He has chosen us to work through us, so let us take our authority and possess the land. And if we're not, then it, it could be only because of the three duties of the authority is to be obedient, so we need to start our living according to the word. If can't, then one of two things. Get saved, you love the world too much. So it's just saying that if, if, we're, if things aren't going right in our life, and not that the devil is not going to attack you, yeah. but if he attacks you, you have the authority Amen. of the word to, uh, to rebuke it. You know, uh, I, I didn't think I'd even be standing up telling this, but yesterday uh, I mentioned to my husband one time that I had a pain in my back, and it was like a knife sticking directly in my back, and it was all day long. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, studying, and it was like, Okay, you're fixing to go teach on authority. What are you doing sitting here letting the devil hurt you all day long like this for? Amen. I was like, okay, God, so what do I do? Let me see, what does his word tell me? Uh, okay, uh, if, I'm, I, if I've done anything that I shouldn't, help me to know what it is and not to do it anymore. But I immediately, I was telling Martin this morning, I immediately stopped and I said, God, forgive me for anything I've done wrong. But now I'm going to take the authority yeah, yeah. that you have given to me. And I tell my body, and I talk to my body then. And I said, body, you be healed. And I said, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of yeah. Jesus and this pain be gone. Yeah. And I'm here to stand and testify this morning that the pain left and I have not had it since. Yeah. And I know that that's just authority of God. And I know that God was even speaking to me. You know, God didn't put the pain on me. <laughs> God did not put the pain on me. But what God, what the devil used for bad, God took it and turned it around. And he showed me what I was going to get up here and be speaking on this morning. So I just thank God for that. And another thing, don't say I can't. God said you can. Who is lying here? Is it, is it the devil or is it God? If, somebody's, if, if, if you need something or God's showing you to do something and you say I can't do it, then you're going against the word of God because you're listening to the devil. Because God says you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Pray for your desires. Mark 11 and 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. If, you just, if it's words just coming out your mouth, we're not going to have it. But if we believe it, we'll have it. That's right. Oh, yeah. Speak to the mountains. Mark 11 and 23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe the things which he hath said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. You have the authority to tell the devil where to go, and to tell your flesh what to do. We have authority. We must pray and declare so God can move. It is an attitude of confidence. Yeah. Yeah.
I want y'all, if y'all don't mind, I want everyone to stand with me and take this next page. And uh, I want y'all to read this out loud with me. And put your name in every spot the blank is and read it out loud, okay? Acts 17 and 28. For in him Donna lives and moves and has Donna's being as certain also as your own poets have said, for Donna his offspring. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if Donna be in Christ, and Donna is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are new. Ephesians 2 and 10, For Donna is his workmanship, created in Christ unto good works, which God hath before ordained that Donna should walk in them. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, For he hath made him to be sin for Donna, who knew no sin, that Donna might be made the righteousness of God in him. Romans 8, 1 through 2, There is therefore now no condemnation to Donna, who is in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made Donna free from the law of sin and death. Ephesians 1 and 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed Donna with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 2, 1, 4 through 6. And Donna hath he quickened, who were dead in tre trespasses and sins, but who is rich in mercy, and for his great love wherewith he loved Donna. Even when Donna was dead in sins, hath quickened Donna, Together with Christ, by grace, Donna is saved and hath raised Donna up together and made Donna sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Even the mystery which faith had, wait, I'm sorry, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is manifest to Donna, to Donna, God would make known that is the richest of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in Donna, the hope of glory. 1 John 4 and 4. Donna is of God, little children, and hath overcome them, because greater is he that is in Donna than he that is in the world. Philippians 4 and 13. Donna can do all things through Christ, which strengthens Donna. And Philippians 4 and 19. But God shall supply all Donna's needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know, I know we just sat here and read this, and, and, you know, I want us to really, we really need to, all of us, I'm going to go back and do it. We need to really meditate on what we just read and how that, that uh, you know, it's, it's the word, it's truth, and you're going to get what you believe. So if you read it and it's like no big deal, you're going to keep on living your life, and you may not receive what God's got for you, but you have authority by the word of God to have everything you need. You know, I, I know I read out of the book and it was about healing, but it's just not for healing. It, it's for job. It's for yeah, peace. Yes. It's for your your children that you, you're praying to come in. Yes. We have authority over the devil. And if we pray and believe, I do believe God. I believe yes. God's word. You know, if I didn't believe God's word, I wouldn't be standing up here in front of y'all today. But I believe God's word, every bit of it. And I believe it's true, and I believe that we have the authority to do whatever we need, yes. whenever we need to do it, and God will help us. Amen. I want to just pray over us today, if y'all don't mind. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come to you this morning, Father God. I thank you so much for your word, Father yes. God. I thank you for it is life, Father yes. God. It is life unto us and to all who believe, Father God. And Father God, I pray, Father God, for all of us that's sitting here today, Father God, I pray for you to help us to to uh, leave this place today and go and Father God to anything we need or anything we want Father God just to read your word and Father God help us to receive the authority that you've given us Father God don't let us listen to what Satan tells us that we can't or it's not going to happen but Father God help us to believe so that we might receive yeah. Father God and speak by your word the authority that you've given us to speak we love you, we thank you, and we praise you for it Amen, Amen. Amen. Boy, that's good, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, you need, you need to 
you need to revisit that last sheet of those those confessions and and just uh, go on and meditate. Stay, say it every day. I'm going to tell you what uh, we have. We have what we believe we have. Amen. In the name of Jesus, if God says we can have it, we can have it. Amen. Now listen. Uh, uh, we know that uh, we can break things on ourselves by our life. Sometimes the devil just hits us, though. We're doing everything we should do, and he just attacks us. Amen. But when that happens, we have the authority through Jesus to rise up because we have his, if we have his word on it, then we can have what he said we can have. Amen. And so, uh, I mean, y'all know it, it, it always pays off when we react in faith. Amen. Praise God. Well, yeah, did y'all receive anything there this morning? I believe. Has this been good? Well, we're going to uh, stand up stretch if you need to for just a second. Whatever you need to do to get comfortable, we're going to dive into this uh, uh, last section and uh, uh, minister to you a little bit. I'm so thankful for uh, uh, what God is doing and, and for that which has been released today. And, and uh, uh, the, the whole purpose of this is to help our lives. Amen? I mean, y'all know that our lives will be better. Amen? If we realize and, and can perfect our praise. If we realize God does want to use us to be a witness, and he'll do it right where we are. If we realize that God, God's given me the authority. Jesus, we lost it in the garden as mankind, but Jesus won it back. So I can have the authority when the enemy shows up. Amen. And what I want to talk to you about this last section is financial freedom. Because God wants us to be free financially. Amen. How many of y'all want one of the greatest areas of uh, uh, discontentment, strife in households? Uh, one of the greatest reasons why why divorce rate is what it is is because of finances. Finances are a major part of our life, and and uh, I'm thankful that that God has a financial plan for us if we will follow it. Amen. So I'm going to talk to you about finances a little bit, and I'm I'm not, uh, and I want you to know that that when I do this, the motive behind this say, well, preachers talking about money again because he wants you to give more. That's not what this is all about. Amen. God has a financial plan in his word that if we'll follow it, amen, it'll be a blessing in our life. He's trying to, listen, say this with me. God's trying to get stuff to us, not take stuff away from us. That's the heart of God, isn't it? And so, man, if, if I can say something to you or somebody today uh, about uh, finances that will help you and trigger something and maybe cause something to come back in balance, well, praise God for that. And it may just be all confirmation to you that, praise God, uh, I learned that. And so I'm applying it, and I see uh, how it's going in my life. So this is very, very important. And so I thank God for the opportunity to talk about this. And, and frankly, I wish somebody would have taken me aside when I was real young and talked to me about this and about God's plan. Amen. Because God wants you blessed when somebody say amen and amen. So let's dive into this. And this is the last section we get through. We'll... We'll pray and eat and fellowship. So let's, uh, let's, uh, but I want you to go out of here with the, with the agenda and the promise and the, the hope that God is going to prosper you and uh, bless you uh, in your financial life as well as all the other areas. Now, look, when we get into this, let me just show you the information I've got down to share with you. I, I'm going to just shoot it with a shotgun to you because I got so much information. It's it could, a whole conference or seminar could be out of, of this, and I'm going to try to get to you. So I'm going to move quickly, amen? So y'all move with me. Be sure to take notes if something hits you. Now, this is a, a this is important. When you're at a teaching situation or conference situation like this, why do you keep a pen in your hand? Because sometimes uh, you'll have a lot of things on your notes already, but there's times when you know that God is speaking something to you, and that's what you need to write down. Write down what the Lord is speaking to you about your life and quicken into you because that's what, what the Spirit is saying to you right now. Amen. So be responsive here. But let's turn over to four, or you don't have to turn, I'm going to go real quickly. Uh, Philippians 4 uh, 19, you know most of these scriptures, but 4 19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Aren't you glad he promised he'd take care of your need if you're a child of God? Amen. And it's by whose riches? His, not ours. Amen. Praise God, it's not based on my account, it's based on his account. Amen. Third John 2. Oh, I love this one. Hallelujah. Let me go there with you. Third John 2. And I love this, this scripture over there close to Revelation. Third John 2 says it this way. It says, uh, tells us what, what God's, a, uh, God's a plan is and agenda uh, for us. I'm sorry, second, third. Uh, it's second. No, it's third John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest what? Prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. It's God's will that we prosper 
and be in health. But look at it. Even as our soul prospers. Amen. I heard one minister explain to me like this. It's not, it's not the more you grow spiritually is the, and then you'll get this. It's even as. Amen. Even as your soul grows. If we pay attention to the spiritual things, God will give us the wisdom and, and he'll show us that we have the authority to gain uh, what we need to uh, uh, in the financial realm. Amen. Yeah. God wants his people. The Bible also says uh, in the last days, the wealth of the, the wicked is laid up for the just. God's going to, uh, is there's a turnover fixing to happen in the body of Christ where, where he's going to get, uh, he's going to funnel the things in life to where the provision will be in the church. If he speaks the vision, how many of y'all know God can provide the provision? You are sitting in a miracle of God right here, y'all. I want to tell you, if y'all knew what this church had survived on in the last 24 years, some of y'all would be amazed. Amen. But it is nothing short of the miraculous of God. At times when I thought, God, how is this going to manifest out and how are we going to come out on top? And God miraculously turns around and gives or calls somebody to give, whether it's somebody in this church or not. I'm telling you, if God's in, in control of the thing, if we give him that leadership and put things in his hands that need to be in his hands, I want to tell you, he will take care of us. He has been... God has provided for Rock Creek Church for 20, almost 24 years now. And I praise God for that. That, that tells me that's his word. It's not my word. Amen. We get to enjoy it. But it's God's house and he's going to provide for it. I'm thankful for that. And somebody say amen. amen. So first thing we need to know is that, that God wants you to prosper. Go over to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 18. Way over there in the word. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. And it says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Do y'all remember the story of Lot and, and uh, uh, Abraham. Uh, Abraham? They had to split and take different countries. Why? Because they had prospered so much. They had too much to take care of, and it was getting all in conflict and running. They, they, had, they had an abundance of so much they had to split up so they could rightfully take care of it. I want you to have problems about how do you take care and what, being a steward over what God's blessed you with. How many of y'all have some problems, enjoy some problems like that? Amen. Praise God. I'd, I'd love to, to uh, in one day, in Jesus' name, I claim it. We'll say, hey, we've got all these extra funds for the, for the house of God. God, what do you want us to use it on this year? Amen. Wouldn't it be a good place to be? Well, let's claim it. God says he'll give us the power to get well. And I want to tell you, if you're at a, at a good place in your life financially, it's not because you're so special. It's because God has blessed you. You need to realize that God has done it. Would somebody say God has done it? Amen. God wants us to be financially free. Say that with me. God wants us to be financially free. He does not want you to be under bondage. Amen. And it's not. it doesn't happen by you having a big income. Amen. I made mention, I think, last week or week before. You can have a lot of money coming in and still be in bondage. Or you can have a very modest salary and be free. Amen. And a lot depends on which one you're living in. Jesus came to set us free. Amen. John 8 and 36. If, thou, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. God has laid out the whole financial plan in his Bible, in his word, because he wants to bless us. So the first thing we need to do, and you know what you sit there, the first thing we need to do is recognize who is our source. Amen? Now, this is one of the greatest scriptures we're going to look at on this subject. Go over to 2 Corinthians with me. And I would like for you to turn here. Hopefully you got your Bibles. And uh, this is a great scripture about finances here. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Start reading with verse 6, and you might want to keep your Bible open. We're going to refer back to this, this uh, verse, verses a few times. It says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now listen here. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Do you hear that? Not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make, this is what I want to hear. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. God's able to make everything abound toward you. Amen. He owns all the cattle of a thousand hills.
Jones. I, I don't know about you, but I want God running my finances because he's a lot better financial planner than I am. Would somebody agree with that and say amen? amen. But listen, here's the danger. If, hey, man, I'm doing good right now. i got a good job. If your job is your source, then what happens? I've lived in this world long enough to know. I, I, there was one job I worked at. It, it, the business closed down. I was out of work for a month. I didn't plan on it happening. Didn't know it was going to happen. But it happened. Praise God. God got, I got another job in a month. And, and because we were being obedient to things we need, need to do, God picked us up. We never skipped a beat. Amen. Just went forward in Jesus' name. Amen. But this world, you can't count on this world. You may think you have a, a stability and a situation in the natural, but if that's your source and that's what you're counting on, how many of y'all know you've lived long enough to know that thing could disappear tomorrow? Amen. The world can't be our source and man's provision, even our job, uh, can't be our source. God has to be our source. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you realize if God's your source, that you realize whatever he instructs you to do, he will cause it to be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. That's in your notes. Read it with me. You realize that whatever he instructs you to do, he will cause it to end in blessing for you. Praise God. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. Here's the thing. If God's your source, you have an unlimited financial backing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He don't run out. I, I mean, there, I, I don't know about you. I don't. I ain't gonna have to visit anybody in heaven that lives on the poor side of town. There ain't no across the tracks in heaven. We're all in, in gonna be in a glorified state, amen. And I want to tell you that, that God does things right. Go, gold, the most precious substance in this world to us in the natural, they use it for, to pave streets with in heaven. Amen. That's how abundant things are in heaven. Amen. So I'm glad. If there's anybody I want to connect my finances to, I want to hook up with the best financial planner there is, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Would somebody say amen? Because he, he is the major one. Now let's get down to the brass taxes of, of how to be financially free. There's three major groups in our financial situation. You're earning. Everybody say earning. Everybody earns, even if you're retired, you still got some money from it. You're earning money. And so that means you're earning money on, on the labor that you performed in the earlier years. Amen? So you earn money, money that comes in somehow, or provision that comes in somehow. Then the next area is giving. Giving is a part of God's financial plan. We're going to talk about that, of course. And then the last part is stewardship. Yeah. And you've got to, to watch over every one of these areas to be financially free. So let's take them one at a time. First of all, earning. How many of y'all know that you got to do something? Be sure you've got things coming in to take care of the needs in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. How many of y'all know it's not a good plan to just lay on the couch and wait for God to stick something in your mailbox? Amen. Or wait for somebody to feel sorry for you and bail you out? That's a miserable way to live. That's living in bondage. Amen. Amen. But you know, when you know you're doing everything you can to earn and put yourself in a position to be able to be fruitful, I want to tell you there's peace and there's freedom there. Amen. What does the word say about it? First Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Y'all, let's just say it like it is. Just say it to yourself. Say, self. Don't be lazy. Be willing to work. Amen. Proverbs 14, 23. And let me tell you this, y'all. I'm giving y'all, I ain't calling anybody lazy this morning. I think we got a bunch of hard workers in our church that are doing what they're supposed to do. Y'all are givers. Let me tell you, this is substance to build on. It's either an amen in your spirit or, praise God, it may be a challenge to you. Whatever it is, praise God, let it be that. And let's grow together. After all, this is Grow Sunday. Amen. And let me tell you, there's none of us that can't afford to grow in our finances. I don't care what level you're at. Amen. So, so uh, uh, Proverbs 14, 23 says, In all labor there is profit, but the talk of lips tendeth only to bitterness or poverty. Amen? Some people want to talk about it all day and not do nothing. Amen? I mean, y'all know it's time to work sometime. We've got to get busy. Amen? Now go to 2 Thessalonians. We'll read this together. I appreciate the Word of God. Aren't you glad God cared enough to talk to us about money? Yes. Amen? Amen? 1 Thessalonians 3, verses 10 through 12 says this. For even when we were with you, this is Paul talking to Thessalonians, 
This we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. That's pretty strong, man. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. How many of y'all know if, you're, if your hands and your, your feet are not working, your mouth will be working? Right. Amen. Man, this is sure coming out hard this morning. Amen. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Yes. Now then that are such, now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work. And eat their own bread. Hallelujah. If you work, you're going to come something. I remember Sunday, if there's one thing my daddy taught me, he said, when I was, a, uh, you know, about 40 years old, he said, Sunday, here in a few years, you're going to be at the age of you need to you get a job. He said, do you remember this? He said, you work hard for whoever you get a job with. You give them uh, your best, and it will go well with you. Yeah. They'll promote you. And dad was right. Amen. Praise God. We need to get, how many of y'all know the word says we need to do our work as unto the Lord? Right. Said, so, well, you don't know, man. I got this bonehead boss and just stupid situation. It doesn't matter. You're there as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. You go and do your work as unto the Lord, the best of your ability. And I believe God is going to manifest his glory to you. Amen. Give your heart to everything. Now, if you work for the Budweiser Company, quit it tomorrow and go find you a better job. Amen. How many of y'all know you ought to be wise with what you do with your natural labor? Amen? Hallelujah. I hope I don't get cut off Facebook for that. But anyway, it's the truth. Amen? Would somebody say amen? amen. Anybody awake out there this morning? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Psalm 128 and 2 says this, For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Proverbs 21, 25, The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. In other words, working hard pays off. Amen. And we, we must do it to be financially free. Amen. So how many of y'all know that the important part of our financial freedom is that we are willing to, to bring in increase, to be able to earn, to be able to work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the next is such an important part of our, as a Christian, of our financial equation, and it is our giving. Amen. Start with the basic scripture of all times, the most popular scripture in the word of God. Let's start with the basics. John 3, 16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We all know that, don't we? We quote it, praise God, it speaks of our salvation and how we got it. But within that scripture, that very simple, common, well-known scripture, we see two things about God. We see his motivation and we see his action. For God so what? Love the world. That's his motivation. What he does, he does because he loves us. Amen? Aren't you glad God loves you? For God so loved the world that he did what? His action was he gave. Amen? He loved us so he gave. Isn't that the same motivation we should have as a child of God? Because I love God. I want to give to God. Amen? And that's a part of my, my Christian walk. It's a part of my financial freedom as a child of God that I need to be willing to give. Luke 6 and 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Now that's important right there. Because it means it doesn't mean you're just going to make heaven one day. It says, shall men give unto your bosom. That means you're going to get it back in this life. Amen? Amen. Everybody say, giving, giving. is a God thing. If we're like Christ, we'll want to give. Amen? We'll want to do it. Now go back over that scripture we was at in 2 Corinthians a while ago, chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. And notice there it said in verse 6, this is, uh, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Hallelujah. There's another scripture that says, With the same measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you again. Amen. So let's give liberally. Now let me just sum it up. I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit here. But let me let me tell you what. God doesn't expect you to give anything you don't have. Yeah. Amen. In fact, if you write a check for something that's not in your bank account, that's not faith. That's foolishness. Right. Amen. Amen. But God expects you to be a good steward and to be, be faithful with what he has put into your hands. And what he's put in your hands, he's given us a plan how to use that so that we can get the most bang for our buck. Amen. 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 He wants you to be blessed with what he leaves in your hands. But it can't be blessed unless you put in his hands 
what well, should be in his hands. Amen. Boy, I should be. Good place for an amen right there. Amen. Luke 12 and 34 says, From where, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Boy, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Amen. Why, why is, is most sermons on money quiet? Because, boy, you're meddling. You're getting close to people's money, so you're getting close to their heart. It reveals when you when you think about where people's heart is, you're gonna see it by your money. Let me tell you, when I was when I was rodeoing, man, I, I knew guys that, that uh, God, they had the best equipment, they had everything money could buy, and then they was driving some old beat up jalopy that couldn't even hardly get down the road. So how can you even get to to the place you need to use your equipment because because uh, 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 you, your heart is in this, but don't you realize you have to have this to do that? Amen. Amen, man. Jimmy, you probably know guys spent a half a million dollars on a horse. Now it's it's you know what? If you've got the money to do it, and you're doing with your money what God said to do, and you got the money to do that. Praise God, go do it. But how I many y'all know we get overbalanced, and where our money goes shows where our heart is. Everybody say, where my heart is, there my treasure will be. Somebody said, well, if I just had more money, I could do what is right. No, more money just makes you more of what you are. Amen. If you're a giver, more money will make you a greater giver. Amen. If you're an addict, money will make you a bigger addict. Amen. 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 You will become more of what you are. Money will just increase what you are. So where your heart is, there your treasure will be. Now in the area of giving, there's actually three parts of this. Did you listen to this? Because I want everybody to be sure that you have the knowledge of this. Amen? There's three parts of giving. The first is, of course, the tithe. Amen? Now, there's a handout uh, that I've given you. You book it there on the next page. So jump on over to the next page and go to that page that's labeled tithing. And we're going to turn to the, the most famous tithing scripture in the Word of God. And that's over in Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Amen? Y'all still with me? Amen. Everybody good? Everybody wearing still toed boots? Oh, really, I ain't worried about that because y'all are giving people. Amen. But how many of y'all know we just need the foundation built in our life? Amen. Praise God. Malachi chapter 3, let's read verses 7 through 11. It says, even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances. This is God talking to Israel about the time they're in here. And have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? How do we return? Listen to what God said. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have you robbed thee? In tithes and in offerings. Notice it says tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes. Everybody say all the tithes. Into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. Very key right there. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me. Now herewith saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not. And this, this is what, God has just given an instruction. A commandment of what to do with your money. And said man if you really are after me. This is, you're going to be doing this. And if you'll do this. God says here. There's not very many times the word God says prove me. In other words just try it. And see what I'll do. Because in other words, this is one of those times God's waiting to see what our action is before he loses forth what he wants to do. Amen? How many of y'all want to prove God in your life? Yeah. Well, God himself says, and prove me now. He was saith the Lord of hosts, this is what he wants to do. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And it goes on and says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine be cast, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. There's great blessings. Everybody say, God wants to give to me. Blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so God's telling us here now, if you've got that, that extra sheet there, let me just go over a few things about tithe. Tithe is the first basic area of giving. A tithe is an Old Testament truth 
that it, uh, we'll, we're not going to read all these scriptures, but Hebrews 7, uh, 1 through 4, uh, Paul is referring to uh, Abraham after he had went and, and uh, defeated a bunch of strong kings that, that had come and, and subdued uh, Lot and some of his family. Abraham went after them, defeated. These men, would, it was Abraham's, they weren't trained in war, but God was with them. They went out and took, took authority and destroyed a bunch of kings and took a big spoil. And Abraham said, I don't, I don't want any of this. But he took a tenth of the spoil and he gave to Melchizedek, was the priest at that time, a high priest after the order of the Lord. And so that principle was there. Later on in Genesis 28, Jacob, when he was at Bethel and had that experience with the Lord where he wrestled with the angel. You know, uh, Jacob said to, to the Lord, he said, Lord, if you'll be with me and bless me, I'll give a tenth of all my increase. There's a principle. What is a tithe? If you look the word tithe up, what does it mean? A tenth. That's what it means. A tenth. That's what it means in the Hebrew. That was what it means in every version. And it was instituted in the law. It was the pattern of what was what God had said is the basics. Everybody say the basics of our giving. That's God's basic financial plan for us is to give of the tenth. Now, you say, well, but that's an Old Testament law. It's not in the New Testament. Not so. Go, go with me to Luke chapter 11, verse 42. I want you to read something here with me. Jesus is speaking to one of the Pharisees or scribes. He said, uh, uh, Luke 11 and 42. And we are glad we talked about these things. Amen. Now let me ask you something. Are we talking about these things to bring you into bondage or put pressure on you? We're talking about these things so you will know how to get financially free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 11 and verse 42. Jesus was in conversation here with a Pharisee, and he says, But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all the manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. That's very important. He said, Look, we're not going to compare your tithe to you being loving and speaking of the judgment of God. How many of y'all know there are weightier matters of the law? Amen. Amen. You can give. Twenty percent, and if you don't love people, and if you your doctrine's all messed up, it ain't gonna benefit you one bit. Amen. So God, Jesus is saying, look, you pay your tithe, but you don't operate in love and the judgment of God. You have a wrong understanding of it. But listen, what Jesus said. We don't hear about this a lot. It says there in the end of verse forty-two, these ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. Amen. New Testament. Amen. Tithing is for now. Amen. It's the principle of God. And y'all, let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Do y'all think the church is going to just pay for itself? God has a plan to, to pour into the kingdom of God through our giving. And he goes, what a great plan it is. He lets us keep 90%. Amen. Amen. And there's blessings on that if we do with the 10% what we're supposed to do. And somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is tithing? Let's go over this part. First of all, we establish it. It's a tenth. It's not, aren't you glad God didn't show up and base the, the requirement for tithe on, on the one that has the greatest income in the house? He didn't say, you must give $1,000 a week. Oh, buddy. We'd all be in financial bondage. Okay. Amen? No, he didn't say. He said, give this percentage. A tenth is a true tithe. And I will bless it if you'll do it. Everybody say 10th. Yeah. Y'all all went to school, didn't you? Yeah. Need $10 on every $100. Amen. That's what God is calling for. And I want to give you some specifics about this. But let me give you the principle. The Lord said it is holy unto him. Amen. It is holy unto him. The Bible says that, that the tithe is holy. That's in Leviticus 27 and 32. That it's holy and set apart. When something is holy, that means it is set apart for specific use. And we have to go, we say, well, where, where was that instituted? How long did it take to get in the Bible before that plan was instituted? The Garden of Eden. Amen. Because what happened in the Garden of Eden? God told Adam and Eve, I've made this beautiful garden for you. Guess what? You, you dress it and keep it. I'm going to bless you here. You eat of every tree in the garden. It's all yours. But that one tree right there, that one is set apart. That's the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch it because it's mine. How many of y'all know when Adam and Eve 
partook of what was God's and use it for their own use instead of for God's use. How many of y'all know that's what created all these problems that we're having today? Amen. Amen. We failed God. Donna shared about that a while ago. Adam failed the God. He, he committed treason by violating uh, what God had ordained. The tithe is like that tree that God said, hey, if you want to be blessed, if you want me to bless this whole garden and you live in a garden experience, that tree's mine. Amen. The tithe is mine. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. Amen. But listen, let me get some specifics with you here because you may be under condemnation. I've, I've had people ask me, well, well, what do you tithe on? Your gross or your, gross or, or your net? The Bible says it like this. Give a tenth of all your increase. So whatever you consider increase. I know people that, that tithe on just their gross amount. And they just they tithe it and, and that way it's covered. I know many of us will tithe on our net amount that we actually get in mind because it's not my choice to give the government money. They're going to take it anyway. When somebody say amen. But if you tithe on your net, then at the end of the year, if you get a kickback from the government, well, then that, belong, that tithe belongs to the Lord too. Amen? amen? So tithe the tenth of whatever your increase is. And if, when you start realizing it works, man, I tell you, it's got to work. You know, if somebody gives me and Donna a personal gift or something, if I get, a, you know, $50 given to me for my birthday, I know where five of it's going. Amen? amen. Five of us going to, to tithe. Amen. Well, I'm going to give that to the Lord because I ain't there getting out of the flow even when I'm gifted with something. Amen. Amen. And then you get over into offerings, which we'll talk about in a minute. Donna got given a, a, a gift recently, and she said, she said, the minute it hit her hand, the Lord spoke to her and said, you need to give it to so-and-so in the church. And she did it. She was obedient to that. Amen. So how, when you get in the flow and start moving in those things, man, you realize God's blessing it. Hallelujah. He wants to bless the rest. Everybody say, he wants to bless the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so tithe on your, whatever's increased to you. If it's increased to you, then a tenth of that is what a tithe is. Amen? And it's the first part. It's the first fruit. It's, and where is it given? Here, go back to Malachi, if you will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the what? The storehouse. Where's your storehouse? The church, isn't this where you get fed spiritually? Amen? Because it goes on to say that there may be meat in my father's house. Amen? Because that maybe tells me that, hey, maybe that's why, you know, so many people leave churches because the church didn't have the, to be able to facilitate financially what they needed to do because the tithe was not there to provide the meat. What is the number one reason? Not It's not the number one reason that it really is the reason. But the number one reason people give for leaving the church is what? I ain't getting fed. Well, if you ain't getting fed, why wasn't there meat there? Amen? Hallelujah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So tithe is important. That's why we're spending time uh, talking about this. Amen? It's, it's important. It's an act of obedience. It's an opportunity to express love and trust to the Lord. It's an act of faith. It's a, accessing God's blessings. And listen to this. The Bible says in Romans 11 and 16, and again in Galatians 5 and 9, it says this, that it, the, the yeast, or, or the leaven, leaven at the whole lump. And it says that, that God will bless, if you tithe, God will bless your whole lump. He said, I'll give, I'll give you 90%, you give me 10%, and I'm going to bless your 90% if you do that so that that 90% will go way beyond what that 10, what that 100% would have done for you. Would somebody say amen? amen? It's accessing God's blessings, and it's an act of faith. Amen? Are y'all still with me? Yes. So, well, I'm about tired of hearing about that. Well, hang with me just a little bit longer. Amen? What is tithing not? It's not the leftovers. Now, let's pay everything and see what's left, and we'll give God a tip this week. Yeah. It's not a regular amount. We talked about that. It's not like you got to give $1,000 or whatever. No. Everything must be, I mean, I know everything we have should be available to God. Yeah. Amen. But God has a pattern here for blessing. And then it's not, uh, tithing is not donating items to the church. Amen. Your tithing is given of your financial increase. It's not an offering. Amen. Amen. An offering is what's given above your tithe. Amen. It's not given to an evangelist on TV. No, the tithe should come into the storehouse. It's not an obedience of a rigorous, hard law. This is not something that is hard. God said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask you to do something you cannot do. How many of y'all know God will never call you to do anything that you cannot do? 
Now, the devil will make you convinced that you cannot do it. Amen? Let me tell you, if, if God spoke to, to, to Wes and said, Wes, I'm calling you to go to Chile and to minister to the people in Chile. I'm sure that's going to happen any day now, Wes, right? But, but you, you may, if that was God, amen, you have to think, there is no way, I'm, you know, this is going to, going to be possible. But if you submitted that to God, I want to tell you, God can empower you with the compassion that ever means you to go minister to the people in Chile. All things are possible, amen? He's able to make, what we read while we go in Corinthians, he's make all grace abound toward us. Would somebody say amen? amen. And it's not an unfair demand on our personal life. It is simply an opportunity to obey. Now, going back to the other notes, let me just say this. When we say we just can't afford it, what we're really saying is this. We're really saying, I just can't believe to that point yet. Now, let me just say this as your pastor, okay? If you're not fully tithing at this point in your life, don't stop doing what you're doing. Amen? Don't say, well, fully on this. I can't do this. Just forget it. No, we ought to be in a growth position in everything we do. Amen? So set tithing as a goal. Set tithing as a goal in your life that God wants me to give a tenth of my increase. That's what I want to do. And I'm going to set that as a goal in my life and work toward it now. Uh, put that agenda before you. Now, I'll tell you what. The best way to do it is just to jump into it head first and to do it. And my testimony, y'all have heard my testimony, me and Donna's testimony before. We were faithful tithers for years, and then we got into a hard spot, and we got this brilliant idea that here's what the brilliant idea always starts with. God will understand if we hold back our tithe to get ourselves in order. So we held back our tithes, and boy, the only order we got was straight down the toilet. Amen? We got farther in the toilet, farther in debt, and finally, I, I can't remember how long it took us, several months or whatever, it's like, ding, ding. The light came on of what I've been taught all my life. Amen. And me and Donna sat down at her mom and said, we were living at her mom and daddy's house. We were married, you know, trying to make it. I was working 60 hours a week. We still wasn't getting nowhere. She had a job. It wasn't like we were just not trying to earn. Amen. But we got in a mess. So our, our, in our mind, we thought, let's pull back tithing. Amen. We got so far in the toilet. Finally, one day, we just, in frustration, caught the table and said, look, it don't add up. What we're bringing in does not equal what's going out. Why don't we just go back and do what God said to do and put it in his hands? And we decided, tithe's going to get paid whether anything else gets paid. And so we started tithing. And y'all, I'm not exaggerating. It was maybe two, three weeks later. I got a promotion at work that came with a vehicle and all the gas provided. I got an increase in my pay. It was just a month or so down the road. We got to purchase a house about a, a mile away from her mom and daddy. So now, just by be obeying God and doing what his word said, our life totally and completely changed by the power of that time. Amen. Now, what am I telling you this for? Because I have learned this in my life, that everything you do financially, with your goods is your choice. But there is one thing in life, one opportunity where you can inject God's supernatural into your natural money. And that is by the power of giving to God through your tithes and your offerings. Amen. When you tithe, look, you're, you're like, you're the financial manager of all this. and you got to figure it all out. When you start tithing, it's like, here, God, you take it. And now he has the responsibility of it to bless it and make it. And I'm telling you what, he can do it. He's faithful. He will bless you. He wants to bless you. Y'all remember what Malachi said. Amen. And I know y'all going to shout me down. Every time a preacher preaches about money, people shout them down. But let me tell you, I'm telling you this for your, the blessing of your life. Would somebody say amen? amen. Now let me just, just run through this. Let me just say, say a few more things to you today. If you're not fully tithing yet, Set a goal to be a tither and work toward it and keep doing what you're doing. Grow it. Amen. Now, I'll, I'll make this commitment to you. As a pastor, I will not judge you if you're not tithing yet because your giving is between you and God. Now, I'll just tell you this. It's came back to me sometimes. Somebody has said in the church, well, you ain't going to have no position in that church unless you're a tither. Well, that's not quite true because uh, we use people in the area of helps that that may, may or may not be tithing. But, but let me tell you this. How many of y'all believe it is important 
that we set people in important roles on the platform, in teaching, in handling of money, ushers, board members. How many of y'all know that they ought to be operating in the very simplest of uh, financial uh, uh, commandments, which is the tithe? Amen? So let me tell you, we're not going to lord over you and watch whether you're tithe or not. That's between you and God, but we're appealing to you that, man, get in the flow, get the blessings going, and there will be opportunities of all kinds that opens up if we begin to operate in these things. Amen? Hallelujah. And you know what? Your faithfulness is just as important. Amen? We talk about positions. Look, I guarantee you, these people on the platform, not just because most of them are my natural family, every person on this platform that you see up here, I'll just tell you, they're tithers, and they're here every service. Amen. Every service. They're committed. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's be careful. Amen? Let's don't judge one another, and let's don't judge the leadership. We're just trying to get you in the greatest place of blessing that we can. So do you see how important the tithe is to get the blessing of God on our life? Amen. 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 Let me tell you what. Every church in America, if there, if there was 100% tithing going on, there would be no lack whatsoever in the body of Christ. Amen. So work toward it. Push toward it. If you're not there yet, listen, this is one of the hardest areas for the flesh to be put under. But if you will take Take it and be, be not full of fear with it, but trust the Lord and jump into it. God will bless it and he will multiply it to you. Amen. And so God's proved, uh, or challenging you, saying, prove me. See if I will not bless you. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Let's go a further. I'm going to go quickly. The next area of our giving is offerings. What is offerings? Offerings is everything above the tithe. Amen. So I'm going to tithe my, my 10% that God told me to do. I'm going to give it to the storehouse, the church, and then I give offerings. Sometimes offerings go to the church. Sometimes offerings go to another ministry. Amen? We can give other ministries and other works of God. So that's what that's what offerings is about. It's a, anything that's above my 10% is an offering. And then there's the giving, uh, uh, the helps. There's giving charitably or giving out of compassion for others. Just like there's horizontal and vertical songs. Amen? Y'all know what I'm saying? Amen? It's like a... Uh, uh, okay, here's an example of a, of a, a horizontal song to, to one another. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house. I'm talking about what we do together. I'm singing that to, to the body. On the other hand, Lord, I worship you. I lift my hands to you. That is a vertical song. Giving can be the same way. Our tithes and our offerings are vertical. Amen? But God also wants us to be sensitive to giving horizontally. Amen? When you see, the Bible says, when you see if your brother have need and, and shutteth up your bowels of compassion for him, how dwelleth the love of God in you? Sometimes God will put on your heart to just bless somebody like Donna did recently. Amen. Sometimes you'll be in the line at McDonald's. No, you don't go to McDonald's, you're saved. But, let's, uh, but sometimes you'll be in line and God, God will speak to you and say, pay for that guy that's pulling up behind you. Amen. You don't know what he's ordering. It's a work of faith. You check in your rear view mirror to see me sure you got 10 kids in the <laughs> but, but, but so you pull up and, and you say, hey, I want to pay for that guy's check. And, and man, when they pull up to the window, it's like, man, how did that fellow pay? You think there's not a blessing to their life? Amen? I want to tell you, we need to be open to God because I want to tell you, if we've said it all along, is if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. Amen? Some of y'all are in a more blessed place in your life than you have ever been before financially. Amen. Why is that? You've been faithful. Amen. You've been faithful. Amen. And you've not been afraid to reach out. And, and how did, remember what I said? How you robbed me? In tithes and in offerings. It's God's will for us to be giving. Give liberally and not sparingly. And you know what? God is not asking any of us to do something that we can't do. But there is no condemnation with this message. This is an opportunity message to stretch us this morning and to get the financial freedom released. You say, Pastor, I need to talk to you about, about you know, my money. Because you know what? In your money, there's going to be these three areas. You're earning. Hey, if you're not working, you need to get to work. You need to get a job. 
You know, don't be coming to the church has to pay your light bill every week and you're not looking for work. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Right. You're working, but still ain't happening. Say, so, okay, are you giving to God what's his? Are you giving him the holy tenth? Are you are you giving above and tithes and offers the best of your ability and being sensitive and compassionate with that? Are you giving? That may be the problem. Maybe you're working hard and maybe you're giving tithe, but you know what? There's one more area that we gotta address. Stewardship. You know what that is? What you do with the, uh, the 90% God leaves in your hands. How I many of y'all know you can tithe? You can come to church faithfully. You can work hard. But if you are foolish with your spending, you can still be in financial bondage. Are y'all with me? Are y'all still with me? Will you give me 10 more minutes? Thank you, Nathan. Will y'all give me 10 more minutes? I appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and probably take it anyway. But so I just wanted your agreement with it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so stewardship. Amen. A good steward is faithful and wise with his portion. Amen. The best example of that, we're not going to look at it, but read it in, in uh, Matthew 25 is the parable of the talents. God gave ten to one. He gave five to another. He gave one to the other. Now the guy with ten went out and gained ten more. The guy with five would gain five more. The guy with one said, man, I'm scared. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this. and I'm, I'm not going to risk anything. I'm just going to bury it. And what happened? When the Lord came back and asked for return, the guy, the guy with five gave him ten. The guy with, with uh, I mean, ten gave him twenty. The guy with five gave him ten. The guy with one said, well, I know that you're a hard Lord. And, and uh, you know, here's a lesson. If you're thinking this teaching is hard, then there's a tendency to think you have the mindset of the guy with the one talent. Shake that off of there. God is not bringing hardship to you. God's bringing a message of liberty to you. Amen? Be willing to release it. Invest it in the kingdom or in somebody else so that you can get a return on what God has put into your life. Would somebody say amen? amen. Here's a few keys and then we're going to wind this up. Don't be an unwise spender. I wish this place was full of young people. Because they need to hear what I'm about to say. Young people get themselves in a mess because of this one thing. I want it now. Yeah, yeah. How many of y'all know the, the worst scenario is credit card debt? Yeah. Boy, that wasn't a big enough thing. Say credit card debt. Yeah. What do they want to do? What does your credit card company want to do? They want you to default on the loan so their interest yeah, can go skyrocket. Amen? Why don't you use the credit card to bless you? If, you? if you do the right thing long enough, they'll start sending you offers of 0% or we'll give you a certain cash back and you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to just buy my groceries on this. I got the cash to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it before you long. You got the credit card giving you 40 or $50 a month because you use their stuff. But the key is you're paying it off every month so there's no interest accumulated. I, I'm just speaking some wisdom here. Why? Because I want you to prosper. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Everybody say, debt, debt is not God's will for my life. Pay the thing off every month. Amen? We say, I can't do that. Well, then stop charging on it. Amen? Just tell yourself, no. Use the weapon of weight. Everybody say, use the weapon of weight. Dead is not God's will. He said, oh, no, man. I like the way, I like the way one preacher said it here. He said, dead, D-E-B-T, doing everything but tithing. <laughs> so, so, so look here. Dead is not where God wants you to be. Amen. He wants you to be blessed. Amen. Uh, out from under bondage. And these are the way that we can come and, and, and have wisdom and have financial freedom. Everybody say this. I must spend wisely. Spending wise is mean you have a plan. Now listen, it's better if you can just pay, pay for everything as you go. Amen? But some things it's hard to do. I mean, almost every one of us, or most of us will have a car note or a house note or at some point in life have both of those. And let, let me tell you, you know, I, I consider it like this. It may still be, if I go borrow the money for a car, it may be dead, but I don't believe it's financial bondage if you have a plan to pay for it. Now, it's foolishness if we go borrow the money for a car, but we ain't got no plan to pay back. We say, well, I'll figure it out somehow. I mean, y'all know that's a recipe for disaster. Amen. If you can't pay for it now, then really evaluate whether you need to do this. But if you step into it, 
If you step into a bishop before you sign that you're going to do this, that you have the plan to do that. Amen. Amen. And if you have a plan, I don't believe it, it's looked at as financial bondage. Amen. It's a debt that you're working to erase. And I, don't wanna, I just have to stop and praise God here. From May the 7th of 2000, when we had that first service over in that old general store building, this church has never owed one dime to a bank or any institution. We have never borrowed money to do anything. This church has paid for everything as we have gone, and I praise God for that. And somebody join me in thanking God for that. And he do it for our life, too. Would somebody say me? I'm almost through. Somebody say hallelujah. The most important thing in stewardship is to have a plan, have a budget. If you look at the last plan of your pact, I'm not going to say, but I just, I just gave you a little example. Now, your budget may be a lot more complicated or a lot more simple, but I just gave you a simple monthly budget page of what, of a sample of what you ought to use for your finances. Because, frankly, y'all, if you don't have a plan or you don't have a budget, you say, man, okay, I got this in. I'm going to pay this. and I'll wait till something else comes in to pay that. Then you have no ground. You have no foundation to build yourself financially at all. Amen. You need to have a plan. Put down what you put down what you bring in totally. If you'll notice on, on that's that's a sample of our budget. You know that, that you, you put your earnings up there. And every time I get paid, we have a sheet. We have those earnings come in. First thing that comes out, tie 10%. Amen. And then we go down the line. Some of those areas, gas, groceries, they're every week. Amen. Then you have monthly things, house payment, uh, car insurance, house insurance, all those things. Divide them out to where every week you have the income taken to, to, to take care of the needs. Amen. And what you find is then, if you've got it budgeted, then when somebody says, hey, can y'all take a trip to Colorado with us? You say, well, we got a credit card. <laughs> or I sure want to. Let's just do it and figure it out later. <laughs> I mean, I or you can say, you know what? I know where our finances are. I believe we can pull that off. Because you know what, you know what me and Donna have? We have our budget pages, all right? But then we have this other sheet in front of our, our budget book called MBW, Money Blessed With. And it's amazing that when we're faithful to keep a budget, how the money blessed with keeps showing up somehow. And we have extra money to do things we'd like to do. Amen? And be honest with yourself on a budget. If you know you're going to eat at Taco Bell six times a week like Jacob does, amen, <laughs> then budget some money in there for that. Amen? Don't play mind games with yourself. Is it all, I'll just do without. You ain't going to do without. Just go ahead and budget it in there. But I want to tell you what, if you budget and put God first, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I just, I dare you to prove God. I'm telling you, God wants to bless y'all. And God's going to bless this church. How? Because he's blessing the people that's in it. Amen. And his anointing. I, I, you, you, I'm not up here. Yuck. Well, that's not a good word. It's a yuck. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> but look, I'm not up here trying to get y'all to give more money to the church. I'm up here saying this to you. God's going to provide for this church. He's proving that to me. I don't even worry about that anymore. Amen. But in the process it of it, I'd sure like to see y'all blessed. I'd sure like to see y'all enjoy some good things and, and special things of the Lord. God wants you. I don't want you having to come here and say, I don't know what I want to do. You know, the money's just not there. Listen, if you don't have a regular source of income, maybe it's time that you, instead of you being at a job that where it's, it's hit one week and gone the next week and it's nothing steady, maybe it's time to get you something regular where you can establish some foundation and then have that other's gravy. Speaking wisdom to y'all. Listen, I hope y'all don't think I'm meddling this morning. I am trying to get y'all in a mindset of blessing. Amen. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So do whatever you got to do to come in to the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God wants to bless you, but God cannot bless a mess. Amen. 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 He will bless order. In fact, what did Jesus call the 12 guys that hung around him all the time? Disciples. Where does the word disciple come from? Discipline. It takes discipline. Look, when you first start tithing, if you hadn't, it's going to hurt a little bit. 
Especially if you have good weight, you write that check. Oh my gosh, we're doing this. And then you show it to your family member that don't go to church at all. You're an idiot. You don't give that money to the church. You work too hard for you. But man, when you're faithful and you what you're doing is saying, God, I believe your word. And I'm going to prove you like you said. Because I believe you're going to rebuke the devourer for my sake. You're going, to, you're going to open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that's so much I can't even contain it. I'm telling you, God has proven that in my dog's life. Because we know how it can work and how it can't work. I mean, we know the results of both ends. So, man, I'm, I'm just pleading with you today as your pastor. Be financially free. God wants you blessed. Let me remind you about this last scripture again. In 3 John 2. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Everybody say, God. Wants me blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. I hope that ministers to you. Amen. And when a preacher preaches on tithe, usually two things happen. Some people get mad and the offerings go up. Amen. <laughs> but, but why don't we just receive God's word don't you? and let's work toward it. Let's work toward getting in God's word and in his fullness and we may just be astounded what God can do. And I just want to say this. Thank you, guys. I'm not preaching to a room full of people here that don't believe in giving. You guys are givers. And because of you, the work of the kingdom goes forth. And I praise God for your obedience to the Lord. May God richly bless you for what you do for the kingdom of God. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Amen. Have y'all enjoyed these teachings today? Yes. Have they benefited? Did y'all would y'all like to do this again? So yes. I tell you, I really think Lord's uh, maybe put in our heart to maybe do this once a quarter or something like that, and and so uh, be different subjects every time. And so uh, uh, we're going to pray about that, see what the Lord would have us do. But but uh, I'm thankful for the the knowledge that has went forth today. Amen. Yes. The Bible says that that my people perish for lack of knowledge, and so. Man, things that have been given to you about all the areas we talked about today, let's apply them to our life and let's see God take us to another place because after all, uh, the gifts of God have been given to you. So why? Uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, you're called to do it and you're qualified to do it. Amen? Praise God. Will y'all stand with me and I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Let's